Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the men of the United States Army. Our story is entitled, Orphans of the Storm, a tale of the nobility of warm, sincere people, as proudly we hail the men of the United States Army and the wives of its members stationed around the world. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, young man, why not let a thought for tomorrow be your thought for today? Right now, your United States Army, the senior service, needs qualified technicians in such varied and interesting fields as radio, radar, meteorology, photography, and many, many others. Yes, you can be trained to do a job and acquire a skill that will be of great benefit to you for the rest of your life. You can also take pride in the fact that you answered your country's call in time of great need. Why not let a thought for tomorrow be your thought for today? Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and enlist in the United States Army. Remember, let a thought for tomorrow be your thought for today. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Orphans of the Storm. <laughs> Sun's gone down. Don't reckon we'll be able to sit out here on the porch much longer. Getting kind of chilly already. This is my kind of weather. Can almost smell the hams in the smokehouse and the maple oozing into the buckets down home in Vermont. That wouldn't make much difference to me. Brooklyn smelled the same all year round. I sure miss that luscious, caressing Georgia sun we got back home. You know, I guess the sun never sets on the army. Never know where your guy's going to be shipped next. He gets set in one post. Bang, you're away again. What do you expect? The Army is where the job is. Pete and I have been in about every state in the Union, plus the Philippines, China, France, England, Germany. But then, of course, Pete's regular Army. Does uh, that make a difference in your outlook, Miss Johnson? A big difference. When we went in, an Army wife had to be able to take it, just like the men. Nowadays, oh, it's lots easier. How long has Pete been in, Mrs. Johnson? Mm, 27 years. 27 years. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I'm not even that old. Hi, Helen. Oh. Good morning, everybody. Hi. How you doing? Hi. Here, come on, come on, in here. Scoonching on the glider, Helen. Oh, never mind, Josie. I'll, I'll just sit here on the steps. You just turning out? Oh, no, Mrs. Johnson. I was up early. I've been down to town and back already. Any news? Talk. Just idle talk. The word's around that some units will be moving out of Monmouth the first of next week. Next week? Oh, you hear that kind of gossip around army camps all the time. Well, it's not just talk. I happen to know that Quartermaster's processing overseas gear right now. Overseas gear for where? Who knows? Korea, most likely, where the action is. But if they were going to ship the men to Korea... And now, look, honey, you're new at this. Don't try to outguess things. But Korea, that... Well, th that'd mean the wives would have to stay behind. Oh, the army's got enough problems out there without having to handle a lot of dependents. Oh... Helen, you all right? Oh, well, I, I haven't been feeling too good. You're looking kind of poorly. Have you been to the doctor? Oh, I'm all right, really. I, I've got to go now. I promised Bob I'd meet him at the post cafeteria this morning. I'll see you all later. So Bye, long, Helen. Long. There's something wrong with that girl, I know. I don't know. Her husband's a smart kid. He's one of Pete's best boys, but 
If you ask me, they're not getting along too well. Oh, maybe the mention of Curry upset her. After all, she's just a kid. Yeah, it's a trouble with the young people these days. Get upset too easily. Now, when me and Pete went into service, people had a different outlook on life. They didn't Excuse go around... Excuse me, Mrs. Johnson. I gotta go upstairs and write some letters. Bless you, honey. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Folks back home haven't heard from me in two whole weeks. <laughs> Our baby, how's this? Oh, it's fine, Bob. We can talk here. Uh, you sure you don't want something else? Soup, maybe? Oh, no, no, this is plenty. Oh, you're the boss. Now, come on, eat. I'm not really hungry. I shouldn't have ordered this. Helen, baby, you've got something on your mind. Oh, it's nothing, I suppose. Except I heard some talk this morning when I was downtown. Talk? About some of the units moving out of Munda. Oh, that... Martha Johnson says you may be going to Korea. Look, honey, ever since I've been here in Monmouth, the gossip has been scattering us in all directions. Oh, I know it may happen, and I'm not complaining. But I just wish... wish we wouldn't have to be separated at a time like this. Bob, I saw the doctor this morning. You did? He confirmed it? Yes. We are going to have a baby. Wow. <laughs> me, a father. Pinch me, I'm numb. <laughs> Holy smoke, me, Bob Porter, a poppy. Bob, Bob, please, everybody's turning around. Oh, baby, this is wonderful news. It's wonderful. Bob, not here, please. Here, there, any place. Kiss me. <laughs> You're mad. I'm mad as a Marge hair. Where's the cigars? I gotta get a lot of cigars. I gotta tell somebody. Hey, Pete! Pete Johnson! Bob. Pete, over here! Bob, everybody's looking at Let him look. Let him listen. How often does this happen to a guy? Hey, what's hit you? Hello, Helen. Hi. What did you do to this guy? Just made me the happiest guy alive. That's all. Sit down, Pete. Grab a chair. Yeah. <laughs> Pete, 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 what do you think Helen just told me? Am I supposed to guess? You'd never. Uh, let me try. Uh, she just told you you're going to be a father. She just told... Yeah, yeah, that's what she just told me. I... How did you know? <laughs> you lunkhead, you lit up like a neon sign. It's written all over you. Congratulations, kid. Have a cigar. I I'll go get some cigars. Have, have some coffee, Bob, Pete. Bob, will you calm down? Now, you're not the first one this has ever happened to. Let him burst a tendon, Helen. Martha and me were never that lucky. <laughs> you must be a very happy little lady. Oh, I am, Pete. And a little bit scared. She's worried, Pete. You know all the talk about the unit moving out. I, I told her to forget it. Yeah. Uh, kid, I'd like to tell her to forget it, too, but... Well, you'll know pretty soon, so I might as well tell you now. We are moving out? The alert's just been posted. Our unit's called for a briefing session in the gym tomorrow morning. Where are we going? European Command. Germany. Oh, Bob. Then I can go with you. Yes, darling. You'll be able to join me. And we can be together when our baby's born. We're happy to welcome you men to Heidelberg. And later on, when they arrive, your wives and children. But at the same time, we must remind you of your responsibilities here. By the conduct of you and your family in this strange land, our army, our country, our people back home are judged. I'm sure we can depend on you. You'll find many things of interest here in this old city, so make the most of your leisure. Good luck to you. ready to relax and show you around, honey. Join us, Jack? Yeah, that may apply to you, soldier, but this little old doll of mine's got me booked for some curtain hanging, carpet laying, floor polishing, and the like in our new quarters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Helen, you just gotta drop around and see the little old house we got. It's beautiful. So, quaint. Hey, guys, gals, how'd you like to see some of the countryside around here? What? Yeah, one of the old hands of special services off to take a gang on a hike. Like to go along? Hey, sounds swell to me. It'd do you some good, too, Helen. You know, the doc said plenty of fresh air and mild exercise while you can. I'd love it. Mark me absent. It's too cold for me. Cold? Well, honey, you gonna warm up ducky as you get along. <laughs> well, we're gonna start out in about an hour. There's a little inn up beyond a place called Upstadt. So we stay there tonight, tomorrow night, start back Sunday morning. What do you say? Well, it seems very wintry, but if Chet wants to uh, go... How much is this here safari gonna set us back? Buttons, Chet, just buttons. Buttons we all got, so let's get going. You're in the army now. You're not behind the bar. 
How you doing, sweetheart? Oh, just fine, darling. You're not tired? Oh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, folks, when you ever seen that there show, The Student Prince? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that was written about that place right over there. That's the University of Heidelberg. Hey, you remember the drinking song? Yeah, where yeah. all the guys with the funny little hats click the ear mark. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> drink, drink, drink. 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 I'm getting mighty tired. This snow's hard walking. How are you doing, sweetheart? It's rough going. You all right? Well, I'm a little tired, that's all. Well, I'll say you are. Here, baby, sit on this wall for a few minutes. Well, oh, dear, I really am tired. This isn't such a good deal oh. for you. If I thought it was going to snow like this, I never would have let you come. <clears throat> Got any idea where we are, Bob? None whatever. I'm a babe in the woods around here. It seems to me the snow's getting thicker. Come on, we better catch up with the others. Yeah, I guess we'd better. Here, hang on to my arm, baby. Hey, Hobie! Chet! We must have taken the wrong road. Bob, we're lost. No, don't, don't get excited. Everyone's very friendly here. We'll, we'll get in somewhere. I'll try to raise somebody. Hey! Hobart! Casper! Oh! You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Orphans of the Storm. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Among the proudest men in uniform today are the soldiers of the Army's Airborne Service. Their exploits are once again making history, and their prowess in battle is earning them new fame. Right now, the Army is accepting applications for direct assignment to the Airborne from men who voluntarily enlist. It's an opportunity to associate with a top-notch group of men in an outfit that's second to none. Young men, if you'd like to find out more about qualifying for the Airborne, why don't you visit your local Army and Air Force recruiting station? Learn how you can enlist directly for service in this exciting outfit, whose paratroopers are the envy of all servicemen. The recruiting sergeant will give you full information. You are listening to Proud Me We Hail, and now we present the second act of Orphans of the Storm. <laughs> Very soon, child. Oh, but we do not go to table with such hands, do we? No, Mother Superior. So, run along now and wash your hands. But there is no more soap. Ah, yes. So we will soak the hands a long time, yeah? Yeah, Mother Superior. Run along now or you will be last at table. Yeah, Mother, I go. Oh, Mother Superior. Yeah, Sister Marie. Sister Paula says she will have to use more potatoes in the stew. There, There is not enough meat. So then we use more potatoes. Yeah, but then there will be no potatoes for the children's dinner tomorrow night. In that case, sister, we bake bread in the morning, as best we can. Oh, dear, such a problem. Seventy-six little mouths to feed and twelve of us with, with what? The children must not go hungry. Oh, look at that child. Fritz, what are you doing at that cold window? Come, child, you will get sick. Uh, what are you trying to show me, little one? Oh, here. Yeah. He is pointing to the window. Listen. Oh, bless me, I believe I heard someone. Yeah, there is someone out there. Heavenly Father, in this weather, we must open the door, sister. Yeah. Come this way. Oh, Mother Superior, get back. The wind will cut through I you. am quite all right, sister. American. Come this way! Yeah, I do. Oh, poor man, he sounds exhausted. Go, go, go back, children, go back. Get back from the door. Go back. There he is, mother, I see him. He is, he's carrying something, somebody in his arms. Yeah, it's a woman. 
Oh, let me help you. Here, yes. yeah, over here. Yes, let right. me help you. Yes, yes let me. Come, come in. Oh, yes. by all means, young man. Here, yeah. put the young lady down here on oh, the bench. Right. We will prepare yeah. a more comfortable place for oh. her. Thanks. Thanks a lot. You poor children. She passed out. The going got too rough. Sister Mary, fix a place by the fire, put on more coal, send the children to the playroom. Hurry. Yeah, yeah, Mother Superior. Where? Where are we? What what place is this? This is St. Joseph's Orphanage at Upstadt. And your sisters? Yes, my son. Sisters of Charity. Sisters of Charity? We're not of your faith. Does that matter? My dear young man, in times of trouble, we all must have a like faith. A faith in each other. The fire is burning low. A little more coal, Sister Maria. Yeah, Mother Superior. Seventy-six little orphans to clothe, feed, and care for without help. The townspeople helped us as long as they could. We are all very poor now. How, how old is this building? It is 300 years old. 300 years? Golly, I never dreamed a building could stand that long. <laughs> we wonder often how long it will continue to stand. We do all the repairs ourselves. The nuns? <laughs> we are not very skilled. The children seem unusually well behaved. So quiet. Yeah, and that is so sad. Healthy children are not always well behaved. My poor little ones are. And so quiet. Our call to Vespers. We must leave you now. Oh, no, no, don't get up. When you are ready to retire, you know where your room is. Mother, I don't know how we can ever thank you enough. It is nothing. Good night. God bless you. Come, sister. Yes, Mother Superior. Good night. God rest you. Good night, Good night Mother. Good night, Good night Mother. sister. Those wonderful women. The sacrifices they make for others. They're wonderful, all right. What would these children do without them? Did you notice the kids at dinner, Bob? They looked mighty poor. Yeah. I wonder... Bob? Yes, Di? I just thought of something terrible. Something terrible? Did you notice that neither Sister Marie or the Mother Superior appeared at the dinner table tonight? Why, yeah. Yeah, you're right. There wasn't enough food to go around. Those two wonderful women stayed away so we could eat. Helen. Helen, baby, what's the matter? What are you crying for? Oh, I'm sorry, Bob. I didn't mean to wake you up. It's been on my mind since last week about those poor children up at St. Joseph's Orphanage. Here we are in our comfortable beds, nice warm house, and I know I'm... I'm sure it's cold up there in that old building. Yeah, I know how you feel, sweetheart. I've been thinking about it since we got back. Why, that could happen to anybody's baby. Could happen to our baby, Bob. You're not kidding. Oh, Bob, something's got to be done. Those sisters have to get help. They're fighting desperately to keep those babies alive. They need everything. Clothes, food, medicine? Well, sweetheart, we got along all right before I got my last promotion. We could get along in a little less now and maybe help them. I won't waste a thing. Oh, Bob, if only we can help somehow. We will. Go to sleep now. We'll figure things out in the morning. Good night, sweetheart. <laughs> Martha, I don't care if they bought out the whole PX. Then just tell me what they're doing with all those things, Pete. I don't know what they do with them. It's none of our business. They're spending their own money. Now, uh, look, Martha, you've got all the women on the post talking about those two kids. All right, all right, Pete. I won't say another word. I suppose she can do what she likes. But you're Bob Porter's superior. You've got a responsibility. Okay, okay. I've got to get over to the post. Come on. Kiss your old man goodbye. <laughs> You're a great old gal, Martha, but when you open your big mouth, you sure can fan a lot of breeze. Bob, why do you think 
Pete insisted that we come here to the NCO club tonight? Oh, you know, Pete, he's got some friends in the new unit in from the States. He wants their welcome party to be a big success. Oh, gosh, it's so long since we've been to anything like this. I told him it was too rich for our blood. <laughs> you can say that again. Do you know something, baby? What, Bob? We're here as Pete's guests. He insisted. He's paying? Yeah, the whole tab. Bob, you mustn't let him do that. Try and tell Pete that. He, uh, he didn't want me to tell you, but... Ladies and gentlemen! Hey, quiet, please, quiet! One of the old hands has got a few words to say to you. Here he is now, our boss, Pete Johnson! Thanks, thanks. I know you're all having a swell time, and I don't want to interrupt the party. But I got something I want to get off my mind. There's been some talk around the post about two people who've been buying a lot of stuff in the PX lately. There's stuff like caps, mittens, blankets, and such. Bob, he means us? Hold it a minute, babe. I uh, took the trouble to find out why these two people have been buying this stuff. And now here's the story. In their own quiet way, They've been spending all their extra money to help out a lot of poor kids at that orphanage in Upstadt. That's the place that took care of them when they were lost in the storm. I think we owe these two people a real hand for what they've tried to do all by themselves. There they are, over at that table there. Bob and Helen Porter. Yeah. Bob, this is awful. Beats me. So that's why that old son of a gun insisted we come here tonight. He planned it this way. Oh, Bob, I'll die. I'll just die. Bob, Helen, I, I want to apologize to both of you. Now, why didn't you let anybody know what you were up to? Helen, I could just kick myself for not finding out what you were doing. Well, the sisters were so kind to us that we wanted to do what we could to help them. I realize now it must have looked strange, the stuff we bought. But the job still isn't over. Why don't we all get together and figure out a way we can help with the orphanage from here on in? Oh, yeah, no, that makes sense. sense. Tell you what, suppose we round up the women on the post for a meeting at my house. The weather's good, we can meet on on the terrace. Fine, oh, you can count on me. Oh, I think you're all just wonderful. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Well, I do. Yes? Let's dance. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come in, Sergeant. You uh, sent for me, sir? Yes, yes. You and that wife of yours certainly have stirred things up around this post, Sergeant. Every place I go, I stumble over toys, heaps of clothes, crates, and boxes. Seems to me you got the whole post working for the orphanage at Upstadt. I hope, sir, you don't mind. Mind? Who said anything about minding? I think this is a swell thing you're doing, Sergeant. But you need a little more help. Yes, sir. Tell your wife I'm turning the playhouse over to her for the next couple of weeks. You can use it as a marshalling station, repair center, or whatever else you want to call it, for the stuff the women are gathering for the orphanage. That's wonderful, There's sir. There's nothing wonderful about it. It's the least I can do. Okay, that's all, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, Sergeant. Yes, sir? Uh, tell the missus to let me know what she needs in the way of transportation to haul the stuff. I'll detach a truck or two from the motor pool. Yes, sir. Thank you. Golly. Well, kid, what did the captain say to you? Pete, I just made a discovery. COs have hearts. Honest, Pete, they have big hearts. Oh, Helen, there's a truck going back to the post for another load of stuff. Have you any instructions for the driver? Oh, yes, Martha. Would you please tell him to bring the lumber for the storm vestibule out on the next trip? The boys are waiting to put it up. Oh, Mrs. Porter, you have spoiled all of us, big and small. It's been a pleasure, Mother Superior. It is wonderful. Everything is wonderful. The work the men from the post are doing on the building, the, the food, the clothes, and the... Why, there must be tons. It's still not enough, Mother Superior. The soap, the, the cleaning fluid, the screens for the windows. The children won't have to fight the flies for their food this summer. Mrs. Porter, I do not now know Now, wait, Mother Superior. My husband and I wanted to thank you once for giving us shelter from the storm. And you wouldn't listen to our thanks then. I'm not going to hear yours now. God will thank you with his blessing. 
It is better so. Hey, Helen, there's another load of stuff outside. Swing, slides, seesaws, sandboxes, and parallel bars, stuff like that. Dear heaven, is there no end? Oh, that's for the new playground. Around the back, Chet, where the boys are grading. They're waiting for you. Oh, kiddo, around the back it'll be. You know, my dear, this will be the first time most of the children have ever been on a swing or a slide. They will be so excited they will drive us all mad. Thank God. Oh, honey, honey, look at this. Look what I just got. Oh, what is it, boss? It's a copy of a letter sent to every Signal Corps installation back in the States. A letter from whom? Oh, this is great. L listen to what it says. Um, well, there's a lot of stuff and stuff and stuff about what we're doing here at the orphanage, but here's the important part. It says, this is a project worthy of the men and ladies of the Signal Corps everywhere. I know you will all want to contribute. How do you like that? Contribute? Th th this letter will put us over like crazy. But, Bob, who's the letter from? Honey, it's from Brigadier General Rex V. Corpett, Jr., Signal Officer, U.S. Army, Europe. General Corbett. Ah, you Americans. Your generosity and enterprise are incomprehensible. Oh, that's wonderful news, Bob. This project has gone far beyond our wildest dreams. Well, I guess we're over the hardest part. What's the matter, honey? Oh, child, are you ill? It's all right, Mother Superior. I, I think I've got a little project of my own to take care of now. What do you mean, honey? Bob... How quickly can you drive me back to town? What do you want to go back to town for now? Because there's no maternity ward here, silly. Maternity ward? Wow. Mrs. Porter. Helen, for the love of Mike. No, for the love of you. No, close your mouth and let's get going. We're wasting time. Young men, when you volunteer for service in the United States Army today, you can rest assured that your best talents and natural skills will be considered in giving you an assignment to your liking. Yes, today's modern army fits the right men to the right jobs, and real merit is recognized with faster promotions and more opportunities. Now, more than ever before, men with above-average ability are finding better jobs and more important assignments in the U.S. Army. Why not investigate an Army enlistment for yourself today and find out just what you stand to gain? Full information is available at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>